Hey everyone, welcome back to Inside Gaming. You ready to talk about uh, game streaming again? I am. All right, cool. Great. I can't wait. Did Stadia murder someone now? No, we're not. We're not talking about Stadia. What? What do you mean? I'm not prepared for this. Yeah, today we're looking at a game streaming service that apparently is actually good. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Just come back. Come back. Come back. Come back. It's okay. <sighs> We're gonna do some dunking too, don't worry. Oh. Yeah, NVIDIA's GeForce Now game streaming service has officially been available after a very long beta for a few weeks now, and despite being a game streaming service, is supposed to be very good. As of February 20th, over one million people had signed up for the service. Pretty good. Meanwhile, over on Stadia, so few people are playing Destiny 2 that players have been struggling just to find Crucible matches. Like, they just can't get into matches. GeForce Now has gotten great reviews in the short time it's been out. Uh, Tech Radar said that it's probably the best online game streaming service on the market right now, with solid pricing and performance. Performance. I mean, there's still some issues with the service, lag probably being at the top of it, but people seem to really like it. And it helps that it's cheap at $4.99 a month compared to Stadia's $10. And don't, don't worry, this is not a, we're not pimping GeForce. We're gonna get into some nasty bull <laughs> later, but Ugh. yeah. So unlike Stadia, GeForce now lets you play games from your personal library. So in theory, you should be able to play any game you own, right? Great. Right? Yeah, that makes sense to me. No! Because oh, we no. are all slaves to the whims of our kind and benevolent corporate overlords who are the only ones that know what is truly best for us. Can I have a loot box? Thank you. So yeah, this concerns two major studios pulling all of their games from the service. Oh, no. Yeah. The first studio to pull its game was Activision Blizzard. Their games were available on the service during the beta. But we're all pulled just a week after the official launch. Ooh. Oh, you really do hate to see that. Apparently NVIDIA only had permission to include games from the studio through the beta, and when the beta ended, that agreement also ended. Did they, did they make that known during the beta? No. So yeah. there's a few possible reasons for this, but the most obvious one is money, moolah, cash, cold hard capital. At this point, most people probably accept that if they want to play a game on a different system, they're gonna have to purchase that game again. I own at least four different versions of Dark Souls. All of them as loved and cherished as the last. Yeah, especially the Switch version, right? Well, the Switch, okay, maybe <laughs> not. It's very likely that Activision feels that if you're playing one of their games on another service, you should have to pay for it again. That's the current model, so. Yeah, it sucks, but it is. Yeah. Not to mention, if you buy the game again, there's a good chance you'll probably spend money on microtransactions again as well. Yeah, what are you gonna do? What, I'm gonna have my Reinhardt wearing a helmet like some kind of asshole? No. no, let that main flow, baby. One of the major selling points of GeForce Now is the fact that you can just play games you already own. Own, but major theaters are saying, yeah, no. Uh, you can't play our games, you know, even if you already own them. But, you know, you can't play them this way. Play them the way you bought them. You or disgusting. buy another one. <laughs> yeah, or buy another one. Well, honestly, we're flexible. We can do whatever. Yeah, whatever you want, baby. So yeah, that is a huge blow to the new service. <laughs> Very big. So a lot of people believe that Activision has some kind of Stadia deal in the works, and that's why they've removed their games from now. That's kind of, I mean, it's partially true. Activision and Google did just strike a big deal to stream Activision esports exclusively to the Google owned YouTube. So the companies do have a partnership in the game space, but I mean, while no deal appears to have been made with regards to Stadia, it would make for a pretty spicy announcement at, say, an upcoming games conference. Uh, that's oh. entirely speculation. There's, no, there's nothing to back that up. So forget what you said anything, but getting a big library like Activision Blizzard to give exclusive streaming rights to Stadia might help boost its numbers. At this point, the Stadia name is probably a bit too covered in open sores and infectious disease for an Activision partnership to help it too much. But you know, they're still out here trying. Yeah, they're doing the best they can. I mean, well, no, they're not really. They can probably do a lot better, actually. Yeah, actually, but. and you, not to mention they might take on Activision Blizzard's PR disasters. Really all around, not a great, uh, yeah. not a great idea. This is just the two worst people you know starting to date. Yeah. <laughs> but then so, you're like, fine, they took care of each other. And then yeah. they're just constantly asking for double dates. Yes. Or in my, fi my case, just a third. So there's also the possibility that Activision sees now as a new service instead of an extension for an existing service. And they want people to rebuy their games or want NVIDIA to pay licensing fees to include their games on its service. We're going to swing back to this in a minute because there is a bit of a gray area here, but first let's talk Bethesda. Ooh, Ooh yeah. They also pulled all of their games off of GeForce Now, except for Wolfenstein Youngblood, presumably uh, because they need all the players they can get. It's like they're game. trying right now yeah. to, to, to joke on our asses. Yeah. Uh, in a statement on their forum, Corey at NVIDIA said, please be advised most Bethesda Softworks titles will be removed from the GeForce Now service today. Wolfenstein Youngblood will remain for all members. Founding members can continue to experience the game with RTX on. Oh, that's 
why we didn't keep playing, because it didn't have ray tracing. Right, yeah. 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 Well, that's kind of all they said. It's definitely gotten to the point where consumers, though, are getting super upset. After all, the service does market itself as a way to play the games you already own across your devices. A quick look at the GeForce Now homepage gives you the impression that if you own the game, you can play it on their service. That's <laughs> The marketing for it is definitely as such. Not really true. Oh. Yeah. Oh, no. So, uh, NVIDIA does share blame here for not being clear about the fact that they are still beholden to publishers' whims on whether or not to include their games, which Sweet. brings us back to that gray area. Feels like since the games are yours, you paid for them, you should just be paying for the streaming service. Mm. How naive of you. Simple. How are you, you so simple dumb child. And small? Seriously, though, that is how it should be. But technically, you're now playing through NVIDIA's servers and hardware, so publishers would likely look at that as a lost revenue on a game for a new platform. And if this all feels kind of weird and gross to you, it is. Mm. Licensing is a dumb, confusing business. There's a very good reason that Netflix is so invested in making its own original stuff these days, and that's because licensing deals expire. Which, I mean, look at GTA 4, just got pulled off of Steam because some music was in it and the license expired. But yeah, Alan anyway. Wake disappeared for a year. Back to Netflix, here's, here's a little hypothetical. So <laughs> let's say a corporation decides they're gonna start their own streaming service. Okay. And let's just suppose for a second that that corporation owns like 40% of all movies and television. Sure. So you've just suddenly lost an enormous amount of content to Disney Plus. <laughs> uh, 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 an enormous amount of content to a hypothetical corporation. Don't drone strike me, Disney, please. Sorry to one of the Bobs, whoever's in charge now. Uh, the only reliable way to maintain control of your position in the streaming space is to actually own the content you're streaming. The dream of a strong, reliable service that allows you to do something as radical as stream games you already own may be dead on arrival. Oh no. Uh, the question now is, what does this look like 20 years from now? As cloud infrastructure gets cheaper and more reliable, is every company just gonna have its own proprietary streaming service the way they all have their own launchers now? The way it is with movie streaming? Yeah, are we all gonna have 15 subscriptions to various streaming services like we have with Disney Plus, Netflix, Hulu, Pornhub, Chatterbait, <laughs> OnlyFans, <laughs> Omegle. Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Eventually. It's also, it's still a good ways off though, because streaming right now is not great. So even, even the ones who seem to have gotten it right, I think are still running into a lot of problems. It's a lot. It's a lot to work with. Uh, so there is some good news hidden in this mess too though, which is that some companies are actually willing and excited to play ball. Oh! Oh, come outside and have a catch with me, company. Yeah, toss around the old pigskin. <laughs> CD Projekt Red, the, the gamer's developer, really. Uh, <laughs> for good and for bad. <laughs> Announced that Cyberpunk 2077 will be coming day one. To in one day? Out. In one day. <laughs> to tomorrow! Oh no! <laughs> That's really cool. I mean, game streaming is already pretty cyberpunk, but then again, so is Nightmare Capitalist Dystopia. So either way, Cyberpunk fans kind of win the genre, not the game. CD Projekt Red has historically taken a very strong stance on being anti-DRM, digital rights management, and their own storefront, Good Old Games, is DRM free. So it makes sense that they would be much more open to this kind of partnership. Unfortunately, they seem to be the only ones who feel this oh. way. Oh, uh, Christ. Yeah, also let's take a moment to say DRM sucks ass. I bought mm. Fury Road not realizing I could only watch it through one proprietary web player, uh, and that player is shut down. Very oh, cool, yeah. awesome, it's really great, yeah. That's I a wonderful it. system. Yeah. Back to Activision and Bethesda as of right now, it seems unlikely that they'll change their mind in the near future. Although I'm sure there are talks happening right now, but there's a fundamental disconnect in how NVIDIA and publishers view the service. So right now, cloud gaming is still in its infancy. There's been a handful of services so far. Stadia, xCloud, OnLive, EA is working on its own called Project Atlas, Whoa. but none of them have emerged as the obvious front runner and some of them are already dead. Nobody wants to be the Friendster or MySpace or Google Plus of game streaming. And right now it's anyone's game. Are we the Zanga of gaming news? Yeah, I mean, yeah, Did you, were you not at that meeting? Hey everybody, welcome back to Inside Gaming Daily for Friday! Oh, it's Friday! No! Yes! Yes! Oh, thank you for the tinnitus. Happy Friday, everybody. It's a crazy slow day, so let's jump one more time into the Google Stadia pool. Ah, nice and refreshing. 